Greetings Hobbies, this is Arsene Zavall, and today we're going to have a look at how to make different shapes using the lattice modifier, specifically for bladed weapons such as axes, but you could use this in a lot of different ways. So the lattice modifier, as you can see on screen, is a really quick way of deforming objects, but importantly it's non-destructive, so it doesn't actually affect the geometry of the object you're modifying until you apply it, which makes it really easier to do later editing. So let's have a look at how we set this up. I'm going to start by making the basic shape for my axe blade. So I'm just going to scale that up on everything but the x-axis. And we're just going to end up with some shape, something a bit like this. I'm actually going to scale it a little bit less on the y-axis, uh, just because of the way the lattice modifier is going to work. This is going to be the basis for our shape, and we probably need to make a bladed edge as well. So I'm going to control and A, apply the scale, go into edge mode, select those two edges that will be the blade, I'm going to control and B to put in a bevel somewhere about there and I'm going to importantly leave a slight gap there and then I'm going to get these edges that one there that one there and G and Y to bring those back a bit to make the blade and then and this is going to be important for the lattice modifier I'm going to go into vertex mode select those and join them just so that we're keeping quads there, and then I'm going to join these as well. And that's actually not really important for the lattice modifier as such, it's more important for adding in edge loops later, which is gonna be useful for the lattice modifier. So that's what we've got at this point. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a duplicate of this, so Shift and D, and just move that along a bit, just so I can show you the two ways of making a lattice modifier, one using hard ops and one without. First, without hard ops, and there's some really important things that we need to cover with this. Let's do that on this one. I'm going to shift and A, and then if you come down here, you'll see that there is a lattice modifier. That at this point is stuck in the middle. We can't see it, it's there. And this is the most important thing probably with a lattice modifier. As opposed to and normal shapes where we like to click Control and A and apply the scale so that we've got the scale here down as one. When you're using a lattice modifier, you don't want to apply the scale. You can scale it, you just don't want to apply it. Leave it whatever the scale says that it is. If you do, you're going to mess it up. I don't know why, I get a feeling, and please, if anyone's an expert, do say in the comment section, that there is something with the way the lattice modifier functions that it needs to use a ratio of the scales compared to where everything is to decide how to deform the object. So for example, I can scale this up there and then scale it on the Z axis because I want this as closely fitting my object as possible. So we can see that it's now just outside it and I'm gonna scale it on the X axis to be a bit smaller, to be about there. But importantly, do not apply the scale. We'll talk about this later and I'll show you a demonstration of what will happen. Now, the lattice itself has some important settings and that's in the resolution. Because what a lattice is gonna do is it's gonna allow us to deform this shape. And it does that by we deform the lattice and then the lattice deforms the shape. And that's really helpful. It just makes everything really quick to do. So I'm just gonna do a really quick demonstration. So let's add in what are effectively edge loops on a lattice. And we can't do this in any other way. We're gonna use these resolution sections and these are called U, V and W, but effectively they're X, Y and Z. I don't know why they've named them something different, but X, Y and Z. So we want some extra edge loops on our Z axis, X, Y, Z equivalent. So let's bring that up. And I'm gonna put in a couple more than I normally would want just for demonstration purposes. You want to keep your lattice relatively small. I'll come back and talk about that later. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna deform this ax to make it have its more typical semicircular or moon shape. Let's get this sorted. Now the first thing is this is not gonna work very well here and we'll explain why as we go along. If we go into edit mode, you can now see that I've got these vertices that I can edit, but importantly, they are on the lattice. And the idea being that if I deform this, it will deform the shape. Now for that to work, the first thing I need to do is actually apply a lattice modifier. So I'm gonna to go to modifier properties, add modifier and then lattice, which is in the deform section. And then I select the object that I want to use to deform it, which is gonna be that lattice. 
and nothing's happened at this point because we haven't got anything going on with our lattice. So let's do something and we're going to do this again a little bit incorrectly first but I'm going to go into edit mode and we're going to bring this out to make this curved shape. Now again this isn't going to work at this point if I press G and Y you're going to notice it's deforming and the object isn't deforming. Well why is that? Essentially, it is because our object here hasn't got any geometry to deform on. If I go into vertex mode, you can see there's only these vertices. There's nothing to deform. So if I just go back and then back into what's going to be the axe blade and bring in some edge loops. So I'm going to press Control R and I'm going to make these nice and high because I want this really smooth. You could do this how you want. Escape so that they're there. And then let's go back into object mode and let's go into edit mode back on our lattice. What happens if I go into side facing mode is that when I move this, let's say in the Y axis, it will deform up until two of the edge loops or the resolutions away. So if I just go and use this annotation pencil, as I deform this one, it will deform up to that point and that point, but no further. So just doing that again, G and Y, you can see it's deformed one vertex away, but not two away. And we can use that to our advantage to try and manipulate this really easily. If I just get rid of those annotations quickly. So what we want to do is at the moment, it's distorting one vertex away, uh, which includes at the back here. So at the moment it's distorting one resolution loop away, which we don't want there. So let's bring in some more resolution loops for a start so that that doesn't happen. So going back to the lattice and I'm going to add on my Y axis, which is V, a couple more of those so that we're only distorting the front edge of our object. So back into edit mode and let's make this half moon shape. So I'm going to select those and I'm going to use proportional editing and because I want a rounded object I'm going to go to sphere and then G and Y and I can up my size of movement to make that spherical and I've got my axe shape. So nice and easy to do, nice and easy to deform and because we've put lots of edge loops in on our object it's a nice smooth shape with a nice clear curve to it. Now for anyone that uses proportional editing quite a lot there is a sort of big question here. Why don't I just do this with proportional editing? Why am I faffing around with this lattice shape to begin with? Well, you don't need to use the lattice. For some people, it's going to be a complete waste of time and it's not worth doing. But I like using a lattice over just going into the actual geometry and modifying it because this is non-destructive. And what we mean by that is that the original object is still there underneath this. So for example, if I turn this off in the modifier panel, you can still see this is what the object looks like and I can still make changes to it relatively quickly. And if I'm playing around with things and later on I realize I might want to change it, it's really nice to have that, that I can just change things quickly if I want to. For example, if I go into edit mode and in this instance I'm in edge mode, I could quite easily add in, let's say, an edge loop here, another edge loop there towards the back, and then go into face mode and I'm just going to select these faces, do that one there as well. I could extrude that in, go out of object mode and I've got that indent straight away into my shape. I haven't had to worry about things and if I was using proportional editing that could have been a real pain. So that makes this really quick and quite fun to play around with. For example, let's go in and do some more stuff. I might decide that I want to change things and what's great about this is that if I go to the lattice itself I can always change the resolution so I'm going to add in some additional resolution here on my x-axis so that I'm not going to affect too far away when we affect our two resolution loops and you will notice it does modify the shape slightly so just be careful with that but if I go to edit mode and let's say select those and G and Y I can do something really cool like put some sort of spike on the back that's going to be an extra sort of additional point to this weapon and you'll notice that it's also deforming the indentation that we put in really nicely because it's part of the base object I could even do the same let's say down here G and Y do a smaller one and again that's been deformed nice and easily so it's really quick and fun to play around with and you can make some really really nice if I just hide that different shapes that you can sort of play with 
The other thing that's useful about this as a lattice is that if I go into my modifier properties, I can actually do things and decide how I want to see it. For example, if I go into edit mode here in vertex mode, and I want to actually see this, because at the moment it's annoying that I can't see it. I don't know where everything is, I might make a mistake. If I click that button for edit mode, I can now see this object and make changes as I want. So I can see both bits. For example, I might decide that all of these, let's uh, shift and Z sum, so selecting them on both sides, that I don't want this to be all the way up to the front. I might G and Y and pull that back to somewhere like there. And then I've got this much longer shape. So this just makes for a really quick, easy way to modify objects. Uh, I am aware that I haven't modified the back. I'll just mirror this later on. But it's very fun to play around with it and you can make some really cool and crazy shapes. Now, I do just want to talk a little bit about hard ops. If you don't have hard ops, then uh, this might not be relevant to you, but it just shows how good hard ops is. Instead of having to do all of the resizing here, you can just use hard ops to bring in this lattice. And if you just go Q and add modifier and lattice, it will do all of the resizing for you. And oh, on the resizing, I nearly forgot to mention something. Let's just bring back this lattice. I did say I was going to talk about why we don't want to do anything with scale here. Now, again, we didn't change the scale. And normally I always could say, click control A and scale. But for some reason, with the way Lattice functions, if I do that, and I'm going to do it now just for demonstration purposes, what you'll see is it pretty much totally screws everything up. As I say, I think this is something to do with the fact that it needs the scale size as a reference point for how it's modifying the shape beneath it. Um, but essentially, you just never really want to use the scale on your Lattice. Anyway, back to the hard op shape. So it's literally already made this for us. And I can do the standard thing of coming in here and fixing the resolution there. But the other thing that's really nice about it is that if I'm just in hard ops and I select the lattice, I could just click Q and one, they've got the actual resolution in X, Y, and Z instead of the U, V, and W because who knows why that's a thing. And I can just click on it, for example, if I want Z and I can just slide my mouse left or right to change the resolution there. So a much easier and quicker way of doing things. And if I change my mind, so for example, I just want to have an extra, I've decided actually that's not enough. If I go back down, I can still do a little bit more. So we can do something like that. So really nice, really quick. I'm just gonna add in a couple on the Y axis as well. Let's go with there. And then I still need to go into my shape. And again, if I go into edge mode, I need to add in those edge loops. I'm going to add some here and to that bit as well. And I try to keep them relatively even sized and square. But let's go back into this and let's make a different shape. So, I mean, this time for something, let's say, a little bit more chaotic. This looks quite dwarven. Uh, let me just hide that lattice. But I'd say something a little bit dwarven. I could put some runes in there. Let's, for this one, do something a bit more menacing looking so I don't know just play around so I'm going to go back to smooth for this actually I might go sharp and G and Y let's bring that back something about there and let's do something quite fun with these front bits this is something quite nice if you G and Y and bring those a bit forward you can still actually rotate things and it will affect your shape as well so I quite like doing something like this and making something like an interesting hook that looks particularly savage. Something like that. Could probably fiddle around with that one as well. And yeah, I just fiddle till I'm happy. And again, what's really nice is that this sort of join here between the sort of blade and the rest of it is just really smooth. There's no difficult transitions. If I was making this shape or I'd made this shape and now I was trying to do something like add in the bevel, that that'd be really, really hard. Whereas that is just so quick and easy to sort of play around with, make different shapes and sort of add something in that's really interesting and a little bit unique to the model.
that just stops it being that ordinary boring axe shape that you so often find on a miniature. And even if this isn't for 3D printing, it's for sort of CG design, again, not having an object that's really been deformed this way is really useful just for your editing process. For example, here, we can't really see this inset very nicely, but if I turn that off, it's very quickly, if I go into edge mode, to just select the edges that you want. For example, we want that edge there, 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 that one there, that one there, and that one there. And for example, I could just bring in a bevel just for these edges as a modifier again. Uh, I'm gonna use hard ops for that. Just to make this easier to see, uh, a little bit nicer for your CG work. So one final thing, and I'm just gonna work through this really quickly, is that this is really nice for cylindrical objects as well. So I'm just gonna make the haft of this axe, let's say one, two, eight, for the amount of vertices. I'm not sure what sort of axe we're making this as, but let's go somewhere there. Let's scale it on the Y axis so that it's a bit more comfortable in the grip of the user. And, and we're just gonna go somewhere like there. And I'm just gonna make that slightly smaller. So again, very dwarven, maybe like a single hand axe. And again, we can use a lattice modifier for this. If I just go into edge mode, put in some edges here so this gets nice and smooth. And then, and then Q, add modifier and lattice. And then again, I can just Q, let's add some on the Z, something like there so we can modify the bottom and I can just go into edit mode, select those ones at the bottom, let's sort of scale that out a little bit, something like that. Let's go back into proportional editing, G and Y, and let's sort of increase that in size maybe something like there. And then let's go out of that and G and Y, bring that a bit forward. So again, we've got really quickly a nice interesting axe shape that we can go and add things in like a grip. And then if we use something like Cable Rater, so Shift Alt and C, and I go to the Insulate section. If anyone hasn't looked at how to use Cable Rater, it is a paid for app, but I've got a few videos for it. And this is one of the things that it's great for. If I want to just put in some leather around a handle, I can just there and there, and then I've got my sort of bit of handle there, like an S to make that bigger or smaller, however thin I want that to be. And we've got that going there. So really, really quick handle there with a grip, or if I don't like that, again with Cable Rater, or if I want something very quick and lazy, but a little bit more detailed, I can again use Cable Rater. I haven't selected the object, my apologies. Insulate, and let's do something like that. And then if I press Q, it'll let me do another one. And then Q again, another one, and then Q again another one and then what I really enjoy is if I press Q and then start going the other direction and then press S to scale that up a little bit so it doesn't interfere with each other and again let's go Q do another one another one oh clicked off of it that's annoying but again just come back in and I can just carry on going and very quickly, we've got something that looks pretty respectable uh, for a handle. And obviously we can then go back in and edit this as we choose and merge this together. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you found the video useful. Please do like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more Blender content.